Hi there guys, it's Liz and I'm getting ready to start this live. I'm going to do it this way guys so you can, s I might zoom in later in the session, but until that time, we're going to do it this way, upright. I am so glad you guys are here. Hi Sanchi, hi Miss Nez, hi Katerina, Catherine and Layla. Hey, Layla, I'm glad you're, you're here. I hope you're go things are going well for you. Okay. So I am working on this painting. This is a continuation of the demo that I was working on last week for, for, um, for as much as, um, let's see, what do I want to say? Um, for, for those of you who are new to my work, I am, I'm teaching this class through the Alexandria Art League, and it is a really, well, in my opinion, it's a really fun class. We are copying, we've been copying Cezanne paintings, and then this painting is actually a new to the world painting, but we are taking the lessons that we've learned from Cezanne and applying them to our, to like a new piece of work. And so one of the things that I'm trying to do with this piece is I'm trying to paint like Cezanne would, which um, for those of you who know me and who've taken classes from me or just know me by my Instagram feed, you'll know that um, I paint very realistically and I, I really like three-dimensional form. Now, I love the color of Cezanne, but um, some of the, the blockiness I, I'm having a hard time like totally embracing and, and shifting into, but that's part of the, the experience of doing a master copy. And so, yeah, I'm going to get started now. I <clears throat> have... I'm, I'm going to actually, let's get some of that. Let's clean that up a bit. So, yeah, I'm really liking how this is coming together. So I'm going to work in that area to, for right now. And then we'll see where I shift as, as the, this hour moves, moves on. And, <coughs> excuse me, got a bit of a cough. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So um, thank you so much for being here. Gita, uh, Maraki, James, and Stephen, I appreciate it so much. I, I, always, I always am so honored when you guys sh um, join me for these, for, for these sessions. So yeah, so I am having a ball with... with the this paint painting Let's see I need to yep so I need to I'm gonna work a little bit on getting some of my patterning in <clears throat> so one of the things that oops um, working like copying Cezanne has been has been good because it's um hey Cheryl good to see you um <clears throat> is that I am trying to um I'm using Prussian blue which is a color that Cezanne used a lot in his setups but I don't use it because Prussian blue can be a very challenging color it likes to I um I always describe my paints by how well they they behave with like how do they, how well do they mix with other paints and Prussian blue is one of those colors that I kind of think is a bit of a like a bully it can it's so staining so powerful and it can really just um, take over if you accidentally hit it with your brush before you know it 
you've got Prussian blue adulterating all of your mixtures. Um, it's not a it's not a forgiving co color at all. And um, so that's kind of what is something I'm coping with right now, is that there's like Prussian blue is like showing up in everything because it is such a, a dominant color. And so I'm I'm working through that and trying to pick <clears throat> um, you know interact with the Prussian blue that's in this drape. Oh hey Jihad, thank you so much. I'm so glad you like how it's turning out. So um, so yeah, I'm just having lots of fun with this with this master copy class that we're working in. And I'm really, you know, I'm really striving to try to be, uh, what is it, to embrace the methodology that Paul Cezanne used when he was creating his paintings. Um, that's one of the benefits of why to, why do you, like, why go to the, the hassle of, of making a master copy? I mean, it's, um, like, what does that, you know, what does that do for you as a creative? Well, one of the things it does as a creative is, is that it pushes you. It, it's, you know, it asks, it's, it's stretching you in a way that maybe you wouldn't regularly stretch. And so then you have, um, you have some really good opportunities to, to, to try things out that maybe you wouldn't regularly try out if, if it was like all to you kind of, or all on you. But if you're, you know, if you're doing something as an, as an intellectual um, exploration of like, oh, well, I wonder, you know, like what was, you know, I'll copy the Cezanne painting and then I'll like think about it. And then like in this part of the class, we then do um, where we're emulating Cezanne. So essentially we, we are not using um, a Cezanne painting, but we were you know, we take we took we took cues from Cezanne, and we're creating a painting that that emulates his style. So that way, we can then try to create a painting from scratch that has that has um, that kind of aesthetic that is Paul, that was Paul Cezanne's painting methodology, and it's a it's a fun exercise. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm trying to get um, get this drape in and and not paint it like I would paint it, but instead kind of like paint it like like Paul Cezanne did. And like one of the things that Paul Cezanne does is that he lets his background canvas peek through in lots of places in his setup, especially like in his like as you get to the peripheral um, the periphery of his of the picture plane more and more are there spots where um, where you you see bits and bobs of the the underpaint of the the toned canvas so I'm you know I'm doing that right now I'm like trying to keep that that going so okay so like there is and I was telling my class this morning the thing is I love painting fabric so I'm kind of in a position right now where like I like painting fabric so I'm gonna have to be a little bit careful and not let my my fabric painting desires take over but I I still want to also get some things in so so that's what I'm doing right now Okay, so it goes all the way to there. So, and then I'm going to be painting on top of, um, I'm going to be painting wet and wet, where I'm going to lay down a layer on top of this Prussian blue, which means that my, um, 
my brush is going to get totally contaminated with Prussian blue. But I, it's just part of for the course. So I painted one side, I flipped over, and I'm going to get that in. But I can't go anymore because look at that, it's already gotten adulterated. If I want to have an adulterated bit, see, look how adulterated it gets. So I've got to clean my brush, wash it with OMS. And then reload wherever I'm going to be painting on top of Prussian blue. See, and it picks up and it's like it's so staining. So there, whoops, that will have to do for now. Interesting. There we go. Okay, so. Let's do some of that Prussian blue mixture. Okay. So this mixture has Prussian blue, a little bit of ultramarine blue, and burnt umber because when it was straight uh, ultramarine blue and Prussian blue oh and a little bit of white to not make it black because Prussian blue comes out of the tube practically black um, but I have um, to I'm gonna need to get mix more because my brush is starting to be not not have enough paint because I find that when you don't have enough paint on your brush you end up like rubbing in more and you really need to have more paint on your brush so that way you can have better brush strokes um, Um, yeah, Cezanne always used solid lines in his work. Um, and yes, um, in fact, Jihad, Cezanne is essentially, his work is kind of considered proto-Cubism. We would not have had Cubism if it hadn't have been for the, for the, the stuff that, that um, Cezanne did. And which is always fascinating to me is how, um, so we wouldn't have had the modernism movement of like the cubistic work and stuff it, if it hadn't been for for Cezanne and what was and what he was exploring when he when he was painting and what's fun about Cezanne if I, I'll, I can geek out a little bit with a little bit of history today is that he even though he's identified as a post-impressionist um, so therefore you know at, he came his ideology his thoughts about art came are are ideas that are beyond or after the Impressionist, but he exhibited with the Impressionist. So, um, which I've always thought that was very fascinating, how how he, um, how his work is, you know, was very instrumental to, to the, to, to our modernist art movement. Okay, so I'm going to, so I'm going to move down. Now, I obliterated most of the patterning that I had put in, so I'm going to go back into there soon to do that. But I think what I want to do is I'm going to work here a little bit, and then I'm going to start moving this way. Um, and so that means I'll, I'll raise my easel up to make it a little bit more efficient. And I'm going to have to reinstate some of my blue lines. Some of them are still here, but some of those blue outlines that Cezanne really liked to, to surround his objects with, I'm going to be that. Yes, and he worked, yeah, he worked with, he was, uh, he painted a, a lot of um, scenes side by side to Camille Pizarro. And what's cool is um, in some of my um, book, uh, Cezanne books, they actually have images of Cezanne's work 
neck with uh, um, with the Cami Pizarro's work so that way you can make a comparison to see the differences between the two how they were painting the same subject but how they so different differently interpreted the subject matter very very good stuff Cezanne is a fun guy to learn from okay so I am okay. One thing also I noticed um, that like when painting Cezanne, my my brushes get messier than usual. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of start. Re I'm gonna reinstate. Oops, too dark. Let's see. So, um, well, in some ways, he had a rough life, Jihad. I mean, there was, you know, there was a lot of angst in his life, too. So, um, I think, but when he got older, like, I'd love to have the life he had where all he had to do was paint and every, everything else in his life was taken care of. Meals were made for him. Breakfast was made for him. His house was cleaned. That's my dream is to have them um, to be able to dedicate my 100% of my life to painting um, as I as I move on. Okay, so now this object has a light blue outlining because that's just by coincidence what's there. So um, but the, I'm going to surround the form more with with more shapes in a in a bit. Okay, so simplifying some stuff. There's, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So let's get that. So one of the things that like um what Cezanne does is he he really looks at things as like mosaics like I, I call them color mosaics and um and that's kind of how I interpret them and and his work is is full of lots and lots of color exploration that's the one thing that I absolutely have loved about copying Cezanne is learning about the variety of color that he incorporated into his work and you know which then allows for some pretty amazing um, visual effects um, whoops so I'm just kind of going around figuring you know like adding stuff and color Yeah. Yeah. So. So, I, you know, that's kind of, you know, everything has got its. I want to create the, a sense of, of like color and movement. And what I'm noticing is, let's see, have I lost? Oh, I've lost some of the, the brushiness that I really liked before I started putting in the pattern. So. This is like where Cezanne, he will add and then he obliterates and adds and then obliterates. And so I think I'm going to do a little bit of that myself. Um, and ah, nope, too wet. So I'll have to do that an, at another time or um, think about the pattern I became a little bit too specific. And... Um, 
And I want to make sure that I I actually preferred it the way it was before I put on the pattern. So now I'm going to kind of go in there and kind of clean up and become and like see if I can create that sense of of visual interest while at the same time not getting too specific. Uh, so That's better. Yep. Yes. Okay. So that's working up. So I've like kind of obliterated some stuff a bit. And that, that helps actually. That's already making it better. Um, I'm going to put in a highlight. And then I'm going to put in a highlight right there. There we go. And then that will be, that works better. Okay. Much better. There we go. Okay. So that's, um, that looks much better. There's that, it has what, it has like the kind of the fun interest while at the same time not being like crazy. Um, okay. Okay, so I am going to, I'm squinting at my object and that helps me make value judgments. Um, okay, I want to get some of my outline back established. So uh, Prussian blue and ultramarine blue mixture is what I'm going to be using as my outline. There we go. And then that margin between background and foreground or the tabletop. And then I've got that edge outlined, but I'm going to enhance it a bit. Okay. And then, and then like the right here, I'm going to, and one of the things that, um, how did you paint? How did you get back to paint? I. How do, do get to back to paint? I need help. Well, jihad. I think it's you just do it. Um, sometimes you have to um, schedule it in, and maybe instead of painting, if you're struggling for time right now, you know, look at see if you can actually incorporate like a, a sketching or drawing, a drawing habit into your life, and see if. You know, and then once, you know, once you've had like, say, three months of drawing every day um, where you've scheduled anywhere from five minutes to, to say, an hour or two for drawing, um, then it might be easier for you to find those times of day where you can actually start incorporating painting time in, too. Um, it's, it's just a matter of like carving out time. And I know it's not easy, but... It's so worth it if you can figure out a way to get the time. It's my mind. I'm so stressed out. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that, Jihad. Um, you know, I would say just try drawing. I mean, I don't know about you, but when I draw, I can, like, shut out the world, and then I don't get as stressed out as much. In fact, it's sometimes my only way to to like recalibrate when I am when I've had a, a say a stressful week um, that's just me though but I mean maybe maybe that could help too um, okay so I've got that outline I need to so one thing I notice about when copying the Cezanne is that it seems like he used the same size brush no matter what. He, you know, there was always that sense of unity in the way, 
the way he his his uh, his shapes were painted it was like all um all that yeah mrs nez yeah take a class that's another way of getting of forcing it into your schedule so true um um thank you messina i appreciate that too um that you like this so i'm gonna you know i'm moving forward and So I'm going to, I think I had already put that in, but I'm going to get a little bit more. There we go. Okay. I just, okay. I'll just tell you right now. I absolutely love, 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 love painting. Um, <laughs> no problem, Jihad. Um, okay, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm moving forward essentially. So one of the things that I like doing when I'm painting is I like making a plan. And so this morning before I started painting for my class and started this demonstration, I, you know, I talked about my, my plan and my plan was that I started with those apples because uh, like as cool as these apples are. I essentially, while I was copying them or painting them last week, I fell into the way I like to paint apples um, instead of the, the very parallel lines of modeling of the way Cezanne would work his, um, his apples. And we, in class, we had, in a slideshow, we had looked at a whole bunch of examples of the way he, um, the way Cezanne worked. And so, with that, we, um, I started the demonstration with, with this guy, like, and like painting, repainting these apples. And then I moved what, well, um, actually I, because I like to control my edges, I worked on the fabric immediately behind and the table, table there. And then I moved to the apples and then I moved over here. And then like, I essentially worked here. And now my plan is actually to get into this plate. Uh, so there's a lemon on the tabletop um, and some drapery, more drapery. And then we have these wonderful apples that are on a plate coming forward. And, and so essentially I'm, tr I'm moving forward and I'm going to move in, like in tonight's class, as I demonstrate, I anticipate I'll be in this area and then like, and then like if I have more time I'll come back up and finish the drapery to an extent but even so like with that knowledge you know I'm I'm moving forward so I'm going to lift up my easel so that way I always like to have what I'm painting essentially at my shoulder length and so that's what I'm doing right now is like I just reset it up to um to be where like makes it makes it best for painting and um yeah so that's what i'm i'm gonna get started and i got um, red on my brush so i can't use that right now but like what will make it will be what will be fascinating is that essentially i'm going to be painting parallel like this now Cezanne painted in parallel stripes this way which makes me think he was left-handed um but when I looked it up on, I did the, the Google, the Google searches, like was Cezanne left-handed? Um, it, nothing came up. I couldn't find proof of whether he was or not, but the fact that the way his brush strokes slanted so easily, uh, probably indicates that he was left-handed just because it's really difficult to make parallel, to make parallel lines striped this way with your right hand, because like essentially... I'd have to hold, be holding my brush like this all the time, but it's so much easier to hold your brush this way. So I think Cezanne was left was a lefty. Okay, so now I need to get my. Um, I want to get my yellow paint. My um, I want to get the lemon going. So it's a little bit brighter. And then there's 
a green stem. Like a green node, so I need to get that in, or I want to get that in. It's not. It's always when it comes to painting, um, I I might say need, but in truth it's want because as an artist we have that choice. We have, we have you know control over what we're we're going to express and what we're going to share. So we always have that option to kind of go. Well, I want to express this. I want to to demonstrate this visual effect or whatever so um so yeah okay i got this wonderful yummy yellow oh and i'm again so this is where I fall into, like I'm painting the way I like to paint versus the way that I looked at the way Cezanne painted. So and then there's a bit of a highlight right here. So I'm gonna, whoops, needs to be more. So there's that lemon in, yay. And one of the things that Cezanne did often is that he always outlined his objects with like a blue line, be it um, ultramarine or, um, or Prussian blue, depending on what painting, um, it, it's, it's either actually. Um, is what I've experienced, but, um, but I, I am mixing ultramarine and Prussian blue and he would also like sometimes he would actually, he'd start with that outline, but then as the painting progressed, he would actually use it again. He would like reinforce his objects with that line. And so because of that, I like to do the same thing or I'm going to go back in and I'm going to reinforce too. So I'm going to reinforce that edge right there. And I'm not being like, I'm not creating like, you know, a coloring book crayon line. I'm trying to make it a modulated line because it, it needs to have a little bit of variety or else it gets too boring, too uniform. And then that's not, you know, that's not what, works as well. So, um, and so like this, I, I need to paint white, so I'm not going to put, um, I'm not going to put Prussian blue there. Um, but I am going to kind of like highlight that a bit. Goodness looks good though. Okay. So let's got to wash my brush and I'm going to Okay, so I've got a white that's got a bit of oppression blue into it. So um, there's no getting around Prussian blue when you've got it on your palette. It, it seems to seep into everything. But I'm going to put some in there too. I'm going to just lighten that just a bit. I kind of want it to read differently. Yeah. Okay, wash my brush. Got Prussian blue on it. 
Okay, so, and, you know, I'm going to be playing with the idea of, like, warm tones of white and cool tones of white. So I've got, I've got different colors that I'm going to be using to create my whites. And, like, when you mix the use of, like, warm next to cool, even if your values are similar, warm comes forward and cool recedes so then you get this wonderful push-pull effect of warm and cool um, even when you're dealing with the same like tonal value um, and so I'm gonna and Cezanne played a lot with that I love that that uh, visual effect too the impressionist did that Cezanne did it it's so yummy okay love that okay and then I'm going to move forward and put I need I wonder if that should be more yellow um, what I really like how that's turning out though look at that that's so nice um, okay um, I'm going to paint that. And that's in shadow, so I'm going to keep that in shadow. So one of the things that Cezanne did, he often changed his like the the um, the I forget the term. Um, so like when you're painting realistically and you've got one or two point perspective or that's controlling your the organization of the sense of perspective. Um, Cezanne was prone to actually using multiple perspectives in his painting. So that's, that's what the, impre the, the cubist did as well. Um, and, and it, you know, it creates some pretty wonderful effects. Um, let's see, yeah, that's working pretty good. Um, so that's, um, something that I am pursuing with this piece as well. So I'm going to make, so then that's kind of in shadow, the edge, that rim kind of causes it to be in shadow. Okay. Okay, so I'm getting to that point where I do need to really nice. Um, I really am liking how this is working out. I haven't looked at the screen for a while. You guys, thank you so much for being here. So we have a, a bunch of new people that have joined. Um, thank you for joining and if you're new to my oh, my instagram lives this is a this is a continuation of the a painting demonstration that i started this morning with my students that are in my master copy class that i'm teaching through the art league here in alexandria virginia and we are copying Cezanne's work this term which is so cool and so fun and um, and so and so the beginning of the term this it's a nine week term we 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 copied two of Cezanne's paintings two still lifes because it's a still life class that I'm teaching and then we then we're in this this is our sixth week 
and we're on a and we're doing a cut we I created this setup it is a never before created <laughs> painting um, of of a still life setup that I took in you know I did take inspiration from Cezanne but it's still um, it's never been painted before and and we are trying to, we are using this opportunity to emulate Cezanne's paintings methodology and style and so it uh, gives us an opportunity to like kind of like dive in and kind of reverse engineer and think like the artist Cezanne and I mean he was an, an amazing artist and he he you know he created some pretty wonderful art that you you may not always get the opportunity to truly admire until you actually try to copy him and so like with his apples I'm trying to stick to a parallel expression of brush strokes even if it kind of goes counter to the shape of the apple itself but that's he he would occasionally do cross hatching and stuff with his with his brush strokes but I'm going to I'm going to see if I can stick it out and and mainly focus on like the directional parallelism of his brush strokes that he liked so much so that's what I'm doing and right now I've been like this is pure straight cad red medium this darker was cad red dark deep pure cad red deep um and so sticking with kind of the impressionist post-impressionist color theory i'm trying to stick with as pure colors as i can get away with um, and in class we we looked at in depth at some several examples of how Cezanne paints apples and this is really good let's see oh hi gallery ash Kiyas. I'm so glad that you joined I hope you enjoy it so I am working on, okay, and so there we go. Hmm. So I am, oh, that's, that might work. yellow ochre and some red okay so I've got And the trick with painting like this is you also need to always make sure that your brushes are very well loaded with brush with paint because I'm laying wet and wet and essentially I'm not doing any blending but I am doing the blending where the visual blending of broken color where like you lay one color on top of another and then those colors combine to create the modulation that Cezanne liked so much so I am working on that right now okay and like every time I change my colors significantly I need to clean my brush with odorless mineral spirits and yeah I really appreciate you guys being here this you know it makes it it makes it good makes it fun Okay, so I need to look at Okay, so one of the things that I absolutely love about apples, especially like 
Honeycrisp apples is the green adjacent the green centers that are adjacent to some of the the brightest pinks and reds of an apple okay and this is me mixing wet and wet because I need to create like a mixture of green and yellow that's working out pretty good oops I'm gonna have to lighten that that's okay I can do that yeah this works so I got to make sure that my brush is fully loaded with paint okay so right there um, and then now I'm going to go a little bit against the shape, but that's just one spot. And like right there, I think, too. And then there's time to put the stem in. And earlier I used a Prussian blue, but I'm, this time I'm not going to use Prussian blue. I'm going to, I might there and again I'm not you know I didn't go down to a smaller brush or something that's more refined but instead I'm using my big brush and I'm trying to create the modulation that makes for an interesting um, shape and I'm noticing a couple things that I'm not like I squint at my object and then I realize oh that's wrong so then I need to fix it and so I squint again and what I'm noticing is that even though that's dark and this there's a there's a little bit more transition between those guys And so hopefully that will look a little bit more. And this is where I really wish I had like a little bit more variety available to me to, to sh like, and I can, this is where I, I can break from Cezanne, but it's, I, I wanna see Cezanne, let's do that. That's a little bit better. Okay, cool. Um, and then, yeah, it needs to be lighter right here. So I'm going to. Then my brushes. And then it needs to be just a little bit lighter here. Right there. Okay. It might be a little bit too much. Let's see. Yeah, so now I need, now I want to use, there's, I want to use blue to create a little bit of shift. So I'm doing straight blue 
right here to create some of that shadow shape. Might be a little bit heavy handed, we'll see. Yep, a little heavy handed, but it was a good start. So now I know I can go back in with a little bit like something yellow, but actually I gotta make a mixture that makes it just a little bit lighter. Okay, that's better. Um, clean okay. okay so that's coming together you know it is um, some of the color notes are kind of strong but I'm liking how it's going I'm liking the so now it's time to, so I've worked on this guy, so now I need to move over. Um, so, oops, let me switch to that, I think. So we're going to get that in. I'll need to add some lights to that, but for now that will work. Okay, and the same goes for this guy right here. But I'm going to soften some of my lines. And oh my goodness, guys, my my timer didn't go off. I'm about to get kicked off of Instagram. So I need to stop now or else I will be kicked off. Um, thank you guys so much for being here today. I so appreciate you joining in on the fun today. So I am teaching this summer two classes. I am going to be teaching a six-week color mixing class and um, starts July 13th if I'm correct it's the two it'll be on Tuesdays and then nice seeing you too Fiona and thank you Catherine so much and then um, and that's gonna I'm teaching online classes I'm teaching a color mixing class so oil oil mixing and it like I guess you could be other mediums but in truth I really we're going to be going deep into specifics of how oil works. So, um, so I really think that it's predominantly for oil painters. So we're going to be doing an oil color mixing class. I think it's called, um, oil color essentials. I think oil painting color essentials. And then I'm also going to be teaching a six week floral still life class online. And, um, I hope you will join me. And then, going into the fall i will return and and do another master copy class like i did last fall and like what i'm doing right now on tuesdays i really always appreciate you guys coming and being here and supporting me and also having fun in that we are together like painting or i'm painting for you guys and yeah thank you so much and have a wonderful afternoon <music>